Iowa caucuses are a week from today, and this week we're launching a new series called Listening to Iowa. We're talking with Iowans across the state about the issues that matter to them and which candidates speak them the most. And I start off our Listening to Iowa series this evening. Does it get more Iowa? Mm. To name a newborn calf after your favorite caucus candidate? Wow, pretty for the camera. Show me your Meet DeSantis. Or as Vinton farmer Lance Lillibridge calls the governor, Ron. When I first visited with Ron, he did not tell me what I wanted to hear. He said, I need to learn more. I want to understand agriculture in Iowa. Lillibridge guided that education, giving DeSantis a tour of an ethanol plant in Jessup. Lillibridge used to be the president of the influential Iowa Corn Growers Association. And although he voted twice for Donald Trump, he won't be voting for him a third time. But Donald Trump says, I got farmers 24 billion or 28 billion dollars. What he doesn't tell you is what that cost us. That cost American taxpayer. That cost us as farmers a lot of money when we disrupted trade routes. When his administration approved more small refinery exemptions than any other, that did, that did more ethanol destruction as far as demand goes than it did good. Lillibridge couldn't make a DeSantis event in Benton County due to an injury, and the governor noticed. Uh, on July 29th, um, I was in a motorcycle accident. And uh, I, I got a phone call about a week after that. It was after I had my surgery, and it was a, a, a no-caller ID number, and it was, it was Governor Ron DeSantis when I answered the phone. And I'm like, well, and he says, Lance, he says, I, I've heard that you were in an accident. How are you doing? Are you okay? That kind of access didn't happen in Illinois, where Jody Bjerke moved from in the last year. She's caucusing for the first time, and in between enrolling three kids into new schools, she's been meeting candidates. I did see Trump, I did see Vivek, and I plan to see um, uh, Ron DeSantis. I think he's coming to town this week. Birke's an industrial engineer, and her top issue is election integrity. I wouldn't say that work has, in, has inspired me or, in, or guided me in any way. I would say that my tendency to be a data cruncher and kind of look at data has inspired me a little bit. Inspired her to join the Lynn County GOP Central Committee on Election Integrity and volunteered as a poll worker in the recent school board elections. If I had to focus on anything besides election integrity, I really like the idea that Vivek proposed, which is there's just a lot of administrative bureaucracy. When you talk term limits, either to the candidates themselves or term limits for administration, government administration positions, I think that's a really good thing. Barrett Hubbard has known which candidate he will caucus for since 2022. It's been the swing state of swing states, and he turned that state deep red by taking on issues head on that conservatives want and winning on those issues. Hubbard sees Ron DeSantis' success as governor in Florida on issues like using public dollars for private education and barring LGBTQ issues in schools. The parents write stuff about not letting, you know, focusing on, in on what the teachers can actually teach and are they indoctrinating children, you know, in kindergarten, first and second grade with, well, this is my pronouns and you need to call me by this. I mean, that just confuses children. And right? believes America's future hinges on the 2024 presidential election. I'm an evangelical Christian, so I'm looking at kind of everything through my lens of faith. A view he fears could be at risk. If not for his generation, then for his four children and their future children. And if we don't stand up and fight for that, then it is just going to fall away. We're not going to be able to save this country. And those threats aren't just Democrats, but also the Republican front runner in the Iowa caucuses, Donald Trump. Who's a bigger threat in your estimation to the future of America, a second term for Biden or a second term for Trump? I don't think that Trump ha can win a general election. You know, we saw what happened in 20 and I just I have no clue if there's any way that he could win. There's going to be so much media 
on it, on his, especially on all the legal battles that are going on out there right now. We have to take that into consideration. Three Republicans intent on seeing a conservative in the White House. And that first step starts in Iowa, where they will make their voices and votes count. We'll continue to highlight the stories of caucus goers all week with stories from across the state as part of our Listening to Iowa series.